Okay then welcome back after the break. So before the break, <clears throat> we had a quick discussion. Before the break, we had a quick level discussion about how to approach this subject or how rather are we going to approach this subject. And now let's take this to the next level. So now what we are going to start guys is going to be the next level knowledge that you should have before starting this subject. Unfortunately, we get so much uh, focused on just ratifying the formulas or just doing the sums that we are not even aware of basic things of financial market. So now in the next one hour, I want full attention from your end because it is you who is going to tell me and I who is going to listen to you. But sir, we don't know anything about FM. Do you have common sense? All I need is that. That's it. So what am I going to do now in the next one hour? And that is we are going to understand understanding of global financial market. We are going to link the global financial market with the Indian context with the Indian context. Achha, let me first things first. Let me ask you a, a, a simple question. Is Indian economy concerned with the global financial market? Are we concerned with global finance by any chance? The answer is but obvious yes. Everybody in today's scenario is interconnected. In fact, a lot of financial products which India has like the derivatives, the forwards, the futures is was developed by the developed countries and then developing countries like India has adopted it just few years before. So definitely the global financial market impacts all the economies including India, including the Asian countries, the Japan's, the the China, the United States of America. In fact, it is said that whenever China sneezes, the whole world gets a cold flu. Mm. So China sneezes, obviously it is not feeling well. It will affect the whole world. Yes. Do you know why uh, globally dollar is taken as a benchmark currency? We'll understand it when we do the Forex thing. But But, but, but let's now first things first understand and connect the global financial market with the Indian economy and see how it is going to impact us. So first I'm going to speak of one of my favorite countries and that is Japan. What a super natural super power this whole uh, country of Japan is. Don't you agree? Yes. Just imagine World War II in the 1940s, Japan was destroyed by United States of America because of the bombing that they did on Japan. Hiroshima and Nagasaki was in ashes and Hiroshima and Nagasaki were most important industrial centers of Japan, of Japanese economy, but it was shattered in the year 1940s. Japanese people did not got bogged down by that and in fact they came even strongly and in the 1960 they turned around and ensured that they are one of the best countries to get back after a setback. Just imagine a country destroyed in the 1940s and in 1960s itself they started growing at a rapid place of 10%, 12% per year. A country even growing at a 4 to 5% is considered as very good. Imagine Japan in 1960s growed at 12%, 10% year on year. In 1960s, they had something called as bullet trains. They showed the whole world how strategic cost management works, how to make best quality products at cheapest price. Yes, they were the people who were so innovative that you know, the whole world even looks up to them and learns from them. Now, why am I speaking of Japan? Because Japanese economy has gone through a pretty interesting phase and you will not believe it. 
but just listen to me and please don't open your google or anything just give whatever comes from your heart i know you have no knowledge just give answers from your heart okay now obviously we all know japanese economy is world's third largest economy by gdp third largest usa then comes china and then comes japan do you know how much is the square meter area of japan it is equivalent to a state of rajasthan in india in india the state of rajasthan whatever area it has that is that small is what japan is but look at the impact it has on the world economics that it is one of the biggest exporters and wow third biggest economy in the world this economy in the year 1980s was almost on the verge of overcoming overtaking united states of america yes in the year 1980s japan was on the verge of overtaking united states of america in the year 1985 or so japan's economy was approximately dollar 4.7 trillion let me tell you the numbers will vary here and there don't take so exact it was this much no approximation my numbers will always be in approximation until unless we are doing a sum where i'll take the exact math but here approximately in the year 1985 the japanese economy had a uh, say a gdp of 4.7 trillion in 1985 on the verge of overcoming usa can you imagine in the year 2022 what this figure will be japan the innovative country of the world the place where bullet train started in 1960s we are in 2025 and still we don't know where whether it will start in india or not or when it will start in india or not now i want an answer from your end 1985 the japanese economy was 4.7 trillion give me an approximation what do you feel would be japan's gdp as of date Others, come on. Chetan has answered. S D Siddharth has answered. Others. So guys, so Chetan has told. Okay, I'll not reveal the answer. Let others think. And ah, that's like my boy Darshan Solanki. Others, come on! Everybody has to answer, guys. See if it is not going to be a two-way communication. Things will not work well. So everybody has to answer. I'm waiting. Come on! Very nice, Manisha B G. Padmavati, good answer. Others. Very good, Sai Puja. Chal, now I'll start. So, see, a obvious answer. Even when I took the morning batch of uh, Hindi one, the obvious answer was, sir, it will be at least twenty-five trillion and above. But the first three answers that I got from Chetan, from S D Siddharth, from Mega Lakshmi. I don't understand. Nineteen eighty-five, which is what? Suppose thirty-five years back, your economy was four point seven trillion, and they have given me an answer that according to them, it will be five trillion, five dollar trillion in twenty-two. So in thirty-five years, there is no growth. So that definitely means that they are looking at Google and answering here. Then it is not going to make sense, guys. Then don't answer at all, and then it's no point than me discussing with you. But thankfully, we had some sensible answers. We had Darshan Solanki answering that fifty trillion. We had Saman Vita answering fifty to sixty trillion. We had a Sai Puja who was answering a eighty to hundred trillion. Very nice. We had a Manisha Vijay answering one twenty five trillion. So on, 
and so forth. Now let me tell you the answer. Even as of now, the Japanese economy is still is still stuck up at dollar four point seven trillion. Would you believe it? And the immediate answer that you are going to feel is what? 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 Yes. Again, I'm telling you this number may be a five trillion, five point five trillion. Here and there, but approximately Japanese economy is still what it was three decades back. Yes, three decades back. That's strange. That's super duper strange. That's how it is. Absolute case of a stagnation of economy. Absolute case of a stagnation of economy. Now, my question to you is, why has this happened? There are a few people who have answered it correctly. Let me then ask them, SD Siddharth says, sir, economy has stagnated for past two decades. So you would know, no, why it has stagnated. Let me ask them, would you want to know why has this happened? A uh, economy as good as Japan has not been able to grow in the last three years decades any idea mega lakshmi says pandemic oh madam pandemic has just come in the year 2020 so 1985 to 2020 there was no pandemic at pandemic from three years it can get stagnated but for 35 years why will get it get stagnated uh, because of pandemic strange chetan hr says they had achieved a saturation point absolutely not Chetan, how do you reach a saturation point? Suppose if I am developing good quality products, then I will export it to the whole world. And if I am exporting it to the whole world, there is no place of saturation. Japan has always been an exporter. So if there is an export that is going to go, there is no need of stagnation at all. Their GNP is higher because they consider gross border value. Absolutely not. Aging population. Yes, that is there. Siddharth is looking at Google and answering. He does not know the real reason, but he is at least Googling and answering. Good. Heard that Japan is lacking in young population. That is true, but that is as of date. What happened if from 1985 to 1995, the population was young. Still, it, they did not grow. SD Siddharth, my boy, stop answering from now because you are just looking at things and answering. He doesn't know anything, but okay, he will Google, he will see, okay, this is the answer, I will answer this. Now I will tell you, would you want to know why has this happened? Would you want to know why this has happened? Why the whole stagnation? I will give you an idea. Pay attention. Was there a recession? Recession is a very small word. What happened is now what we are going to understand. And then we will connect a lot of other things. Pay attention. So what happened in Japan is this. Okay. See here. Pay attention. In the... So I am going to discuss with you two economies. One is Japan. Another economy that I am going to discuss about is correct. Another economy that I am going to discuss about is Zimbabwe. You would know about it. You would have heard about it. And then I am going to connect you with something which is going to make you believe that yes, share market and stock market is what now you should think of. Chalo, so we will start. So in the year 1970s, I will not get into the very in-depth things, but I will just give you an idea of why did this stagnation happen. In the year 1970, yeah, what happened in the year 1970s is that the Gulf countries who supply the Gulf countries, all of us know Saudi Arabia and all of those Gulf countries, they supply oil, they supply oil to the whole world crude oil is imported to by the whole world including japan and japan also imports japan also imports 
approximately 95% of its crude oil requirements from gulf countries so japan also imports 95% of its crude oil from the gulf countries now what happened in 1970 was that these gulf countries started increasing the oil price so say for example if the oil price was dollar 5 per barrel they increased it to dollar 15 per barrel now if this happens tell me what will happen to the japanese production what will happen to the japanese production cost can i say if you are importing oil you will use that oil in the production correct and if you are using that oil in production definitely the cost of production will increase big time why will the cost of production increase because see oil is used in transportation every business requires transportation oil is used in producing products in machinery all of that you require oil and if without oil you will not be able to produce anything so if your oil requirements or, or oil costing has increased three times can i say the cost of production will also increase and yes it did increase in japan and it did increase approximately 2 to 3 times say 2 times the japanese production cost of production increased now this yes now this as a result of this what happened was as a result of this a lot of inflation started happening in japan a lot of inflation started happening why what is inflation can i say increase in the prices of goods and services so in japan what happened was in japan because the cost of production increased the inflation started increasing and as a result of this japan being a net exporter was not able to export more you know why they were not able to export because of this reason see now suppose if usa or any other country other country is other country is importing from japan right japan is an exporter they are importing till now japan was importing to them at dollar 100 per unit now because of the oil increase can i say japan will now export at dollar 150 per unit because japan's cost of production has increased as a result its sales price will also increase and now tell me if you are a united states of america or you are some other country so far you are importing at dollar 100 now will you import at dollar 150 or you will look for alternatives you will import at dollar 50 or you will look for alternatives definitely you will look for alternatives because who will accept a 50% increase in the cost yeah who will accept a 50% increase in cost of my imports so that is where other countries were started they, they, these usa and other countries looking started looking for alternatives now japan government realized this that people that other countries are looking for alternatives japan don't want to lose their export benefits they want to export as much as possible so now government interfered and government said that okay don't worry don't worry don't worry what we will do is we will help the businesses we will help the businesses but how can a government help businesses government how can a government help businesses by giving loans by giving loans now how does a government help a business by giving a loan by reducing by reducing the interest rate by reducing the interest rates so what did japanese government do reduce the interest rate so how much did they reduce they almost reduce the interest rate say from 5% to 1% now tell me if 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 the rate of interest is lowered will you take the loans or you will not take the loans a logical question i am asking you if the rate of interest is lowered in market the loans were available for 5% but now the loans are available at 1% interest will you take the loan or you will not take the loan can i say you will rush to take the loans and this is what japanese people started doing they rushed to take loans they rushed to take the loans 
Now, when they rush to take the loans, do you know what did they do? Why did government of Japan reduce the interest rate? So that they could compensate the uh, businesses for the increasing cost of production on account of oil. That is why the government reduced the interest rate so that they could compensate the businesses. Why? So that by cost of production is increasing on account of oil, at least reduce the interest rate so that it would be compensated. And again, the overall cost would remain at dollar hundred and people will purchase from Japan only. That was the intention, but it turned out the other way around. Japanese people started taking loans and started investing in real estate because at that point in time, the real estate market, especially places like Tokyo, were at their peak, were at their peak. So people started thinking, let's take loans, invest in the real estate market. The real estate will grow. We will be able to earn a lot of money. And that is where, say, for example, Mr. Sankal. Let's take an example of Mr. Sankal. Mr. Sankal thought, let's take a loan. Say, I'll take a loan of, say, uh, how much? Say, 15 lakh rupees. I'll take a loan. And from that loan, I will purchase a real estate property. And, 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 and. now, can I say 80% property is financed? 80% is of uh, loan is financed by them. And I want it in loan only because the loan rate is only 1%. So I am very much interested in taking this loan. So I have taken a loan. As Sankalp is taking a loan. Can I say it is a no-brainer? Everybody else in Japan will also start doing it because they are getting loan at a cheaper cost and they will start building their real estate properties. As a result of this, the demand for real estate shot up, shot up immediately. And this 15 lakh became rupees 45 lakh in no time. This 15 lakh became 45 lakh in no time. And as a result, as a result, of this, this 15 lakh become 45 lakh. And as a result, I started taking more loans. I started taking more loans. Why? Now imagine, no, I have taken a loan. The value of the property has increased three times. Will I not be interested to invest more in this kind of investment like a real estate? It is booming. In no time, it has given me three times returns. So I will take more loan and I will try to invest more in the property. And that is where a asset bubble was created in Japan such that even after 35 years, they are not able to get back to the real estate prices that were there in the year 1985. Because now a lot of people started taking loan, loan on loan. And as a result of which, there was a lot of mortgage property with the Japanese bank. Now, what will the Japanese bank do with this mortgage property? Because now what has happened? A lot of people have taken the loan. As a result, the value of property has gone up, but it is actually a bubble. Now, people do now. Now, what happened is the Japanese government realized that something is going wrong. Japanese government thought that we had reduced this to 1%. Why? In order to give loans to the people so that they can invest it in the business and they can, you know, have a fair play in terms of cost. But they realize that all of people have started investing in the assets. The real estate prices have shot up. And then the Japanese government realized that this is something wrong. What will you do? Suppose if you were Japanese government, what will you do? Can I say now instead of keeping it, will you still keep it at 1%? The answer is no. They reinstated it back to 5%. Now when they reinstated it back to 5%, can I say the loan become costlier? When the loan become costlier, the interest rates become costlier. When the loan becomes costlier, the interest rate becomes costlier. And... I thought I just have to pay 1%. Now I have to pay 5%. I do not have enough money to pay that 5% loan. And as a result of this, people started defaulting in the loans. People started defaulting in the loans. As a result of that default, Japanese bank had a lot of mortgage and there was oversupply. As a result of this oversupply, the value of 45 lakhs went down to 20 lakhs the value of 20 lakhs went down to 10 lakhs and eventually it even went down to 5 lakhs so i had proper started purchasing a property at 15 lakh then the value went to 45 lakh at this point again i purchased a property 
करेक्ट नाउ द वैल्यू हैज कॉन डाउन एंड डाउन एंड डाउन बिकॉज पीपल आर डिफॉल्टिंग बैंक हैव इनफ ऑफ मॉडगेज ओवर सप्लाई एंड नाउ द इंटरेस्ट रेट हैज शॉर्ट अप देर इज नो लोन अवेलेबल एट अ चीप रेट and the real estate bubble bursted and this real estate bubble created a havoc in japanese economy and till now as i told you they have not been able to the banks in japan were in a shabby state and over a period of time they started recovering then came the us recession in 2008 they started again they had a negative gdp then then again because see in recession in us means japanese exports will stop because japanese exports majorly to Jap usa japanese exports stop because of recession so just when they were planning to get back again 3 years there was recession in us and uh us exports got halted again they started to rebuild and then there is this ukraine war uh, russia ukraine war as a result of this the oil prices have shot up again and as a result they are facing issues again as a result what has happened is they have not able to reach to that level till now they are almost now probably it is seen that because of good government policies japan may get back to those prices in few time does japanese people have a issue with working the answer is no if indians work for 10 hours the japanese people are ready to work for 1.5 times 2 times are they not patriotic they are fully patriotic are they uh, not innovative in their products boss they introduced in the year 1960 they introduced the concept of bullet trains but one big issue of not managing your financial policy properly has resulted in japanese uh, economy going to back step for approximately 3 big decades which you believe it do you realize the importance of framing a proper financial policy do you realize the importance of framing a proper financial policy yes or no yes or no everybody yes and this is where who was the finance minister then ha ah. see it is easier to say but it is not the finance minister only the monetary policy and see their intention was positive their intention was bona fide it is the people who took it with some other intention and who knew that this was going to happen yaar who knew this is going to happen again there is a lot more detailing into all of this asset bubble thing i've just given you a small gist but this is what happened primarily let's take one more example of another economy called as zimbabwe i have one question to each one of you i have one question to each one of you can i ask how do we see zimbabwe as a country zimbabwe is where zimbabwe is in africa zimbabwe is in africa all of us know that how do we you know from the time we are born whenever we hear the word say usa how polished country australia developed country how do you and me view zimbabwe as mega lakshmi is saying they would have given loans for business purposes exactly but who knew that no now it is easier for you and me to say this they should have devalued the currency to a certain extent chetan they have done it to a certain extent they have done it but see again devaluation has its own ripple effects negative effects which we will see when we do the forex chapter so that's where we they tried all of those permutations but eventually didn't work uh, how do you see Zimbabwe has I've got some good answers Chetan is saying poor country underdeveloped country very true underdeveloped country everybody is saying small underdeveloped country now let me give you a fact about Zimbabwe 1985 Zimbabwe dollar Zimbabwe dollar was greater than US dollar yes they were a prosperous country in the 1985 and they are uh their value was greater than even a us dollar one of the most prosperous countries of africa was zimbabwe it's a landlocked country but it was prosperous at that point in time but then what happened so there was 2 3 years wherein they had big food crisis so there were droughts in zimbabwe so there were food crisis at the same time there were also a lot of health crisis as a result of food crisis there was a lot of 
health crisis there was a lot of health crisis so food crisis was there health crisis was there and that is where zimbabwe economy started going down no problem two to three years this was the scenario they started going down so they approached united states of america and they told usa boss please give us some loan here we are going through a tough time there is a food crisis there is a health crisis in our country please give us some loan so zimbabwe uh, sorry usa agreed to it so usa gave them a loan and zimbabwe was under debt now in order to get out of this debt so now zimbabwe is under a little bit of debt in order to get out of this debt do you know what did zimbabwe do so zimbabwe had taken a, a lot of us dollar debt zimbabwe started printing currency in a unlimited manner gosh why they thought let us print the currency so that once we print the currency we will have a lot of money and we will give this money to us repay their debt we will give this money to the people of zimbabwe people of zimbabwe will be very very happy that yes we have got a lot of money as a result of this printing currency unlimited printing of currency as a result of this stupidity people of zimbabwe started got getting a lot of money when you have a lot of money can i say you will spend rigorously you will spend enormously so people started spending for a few years everybody thought that wow things are going so good we are getting money from the uh, government they are printing unlimited we are able to spend as much as how much we want over a period of time the spiraling effect resulted into a inflation of 1200 percent over a period of time in order to cut this they started printing more currency and there was a time when their inflation rate was 300 percent per annum 300 300 which is 3 lakh percent in fact this is a small number it was even more higher than this that was their inflation rate such that every day the price of commodity used to double every day the price of commodity used to double and 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 such a thing happened that they had to print a currency called as 1 million zimbabwe dollar then 1 billion zimbabwe dollar if you need a bread you need 1 billion zimbabwe dollar such that they had to print a currency of 1 trillion zimbabwe dollar oh gosh would you believe it yes this is what happened a trillion dollar note was printed and put on ebay for sale wow now we can only laugh on this such was the value of their currency so that what did they do you know they discontinued the zimbabwean dollar and they said that from now on our main currency will be us dollar inflation is a small word dina inflation led to something called as hyperinflation and such hyperinflation that it was uncontrollable even though people had money the value of that money had gone so down that it was absolutely not viable option for the public around and this resulted in them cancelling their currency us dollar as a result at that point in time was adopted imagine why, why why did this happen again zimbabwe at one point in time was better than usa no yes they had a food crisis health crisis for two to three years and they had taken a loan and they could have repaid it easily but can i say improper incorrect financial policy by the zimbabwean government resulted in inflation resulted in hyperinflation and the country was resulted into a disaster can i say two examples that we took one of japan other of zimbabwe both can i say had a disaster in their economy only because of one thing and that is improper financial policies 
improper financial policy so don't you feel that you should understand first how a, a financial policy should be made and then a decision should be taken suppose if you were made financial uh, consultant of a company cfo of a company or say a financial finance minister of some country then what would you do even you would result in this japan or zimbabwe crisis so now we realize that financial policies should be very strong should be very clear should be forward looking and now let us understand in depth of how can we make it in the best manner possible so now you are going to step into the shoes of the governor of india rbi governor who makes the monetary policies and let's see what decisions we take and accordingly whether we will be able to save our economy as well see even india can go the japan way if the financial and monetary policies are not planned in a proper manner the same thing which happened in zimbabwe happened in brazil to a certain extent and venezuela to a large extent so can i say that yes this is happening worldwide but how can we manage it is now what we are going to connect with the financial policies of india have you ever given an ear to what happens when the finance minister or the rbi governor gives you the financial policies no sir we have no time we are doing busy in auditing and everything now you are going to make the policy pay attention suppose india is now facing inflation so what is inflation what is inflation i am asking you what is inflation in simple words i don't want any jargons i don't understand them can i say rise in prices of commodities in a simple word rise in prices of commodities basically results in inflation correct uh yes okay now tell me what could be the reason of inflation what could be the reason why would price of a commodity rise what could be the reason a simple economic deficit the uh, reason would be what think and answer now you have to answer uh, be very much attentive on your this and be very swift in answering why would there be a inflation why would there be a rise in price of commodities crude oil prices oh my god i'll tell you a simple answer few people are answering at very high level i'll give you a simple answer usually it is the demand supply gap usually it is a demand supply gap which results in this say for example i'll give you a small example suppose there is a mobile phone okay there is a mobile phone there is in all 100 units of mobile phone and the demand for this mobile phone the demand for this mobile phone is say there are 1000 customers there are 1000 customers who are demanding this mobile 100 mobile phones what will happen there is a demand from 1000 customers but in all we have only 1000 units of mobile phone what will happen you tell me parmi said parmi patel said yes increase in demand then supply very good parmi now what will happen in this scenario practical scenario 1000 customers and 100 units of mobile phone available what will happen lower supply excess demand what will this result into can i say suppose if you are selling mobile and you know that you have only 100 mobiles but there are 1000 people who are waiting to purchase your mobile what will you do tell me logically yaar come on so definitely i will increase the price of mobile phone so can i say there is a big mismatch can i say there is a big mismatch big demand and supply gap which has happened and as a result of this inflation happens everybody yes you will charge higher you will increase the prices everybody yes darshan is saying auction wow wow means hyper inflation wow wow so can i say demand supply gap has resulted into inflation now take another example now take another example pay attention suppose if there is only one mobile phone in the country in whole india there is only one mobile phone in the country so far you were selling it at 
Now there are say 20 people who are interested in buying this mobile phone. What will happen? If 20 people are interested in buying this mobile phone and only one mobile phone is there of 20,000, you will increase the price. But obvious. Now let me tell you one thing. The 20 people do not have money. Do not have money to purchase this mobile phone. Now tell me, will you increase the price of the mobile phone? Yes or no? Yes or no? So, one mobile phone, only one mobile phone. 20 people are ready to purchase it. The immediate answer is we will increase the price. But those 20 people do not have money at all. Do not have money at all. Now, will whoever pays more gets the product. But 20 of them are like you article clerks. No money at all. No money. How much you earn? Get spend it. Sir, you are telling us about our life. This is what happening with you, right? So suppose these 20 people are pretty article clerks like you, not earning anything at all. So now, will and I am the seller. Now knowing you guys, can I increase the price of mobile phone? The answer is no. So can I say here, here supply is less, demand is more. Still you have not increased the prices. Supply. Somebody said me, I think uh, Padmavati said, Megha Lakshmi or Padmavati said, Sir, if their demand is high, supply is low, it will result into inflation. But your demand is high. 20 people are ready to uh, buy the mobile phone. But supply is low. Only one mobile phone is there. Still, we are not able to increase the price. Why is it not resulting into inflation? Because inflation, because inflation will happen when demand supply gap is also there with liquidity. Here, there is a liquidity crisis and as a result of which, my inflation will not increase. So, if I have to control inflation, can I say I will have to, the, there is saying is there, no, to stop the train, pull the chain. If I have to stop inflation, what will I do? What will I do? Can I say, I will reduce the, I will ensure that there is liquidity crisis in the market. I will reduce the liquidity in the market as a result of which the inflation could get controlled. Are bolo, yes or no? Yes. Now suppose everybody is understanding it. Is it going very high over your head or you are able to connect it? You are able to connect it or is it going very high or is, you are thinking of first lecture. You are speaking of demand, supply, liquidity. Oh my God. Is it that or it is interesting and you want to answer and you want it to continue? Tell me. Come on. As whatever you say, I will do. As you say. Understandable. It's fun. Interesting. And you are connecting it. Right? Okay. So now we realize. Suppose now if you are made the you are made the finance minister or the uh, RBI governor. You are made the RBI governor. Congratulations. You are made the finance minister. You have studied with, you have studied financial management with Sankalp sir. And that is the reason you got it. So now, all right. So now my question to you, suppose India is, facing inflation. Suppose India is facing inflation. Inflation in India has gone up. What will be your next step? What will you do? Tell me now. What will you do? Inflation in India has gone up. What will you do? What will be the next thing that you will do? Inflation will increase. If, if, hey, wait, 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 wait. Inflation will increase if it is supported by liquidity. So can I say if inflation is increasing to control this inflation, can I say I will reduce the liquidity? I will reduce the liquidity. Everybody agrees with me? Yes. How do I reduce the liquidity in the market? How do I reduce the liquidity in the market? Curb out liquidity as Darshan is saying. Padmavati is also agreeing to it. Yes. So you will try to reduce liquidity. You are the RBI governor. You see, this is where you are standing. So inflation is increasing. You immediately realize, oh, sir, I told that 
Inflation will increase only if it is supported by liquidity. Let me cut the liquidity. Okay. How do you manage the liquidity? And all of you have given the correct answer. Can I say I can increase the interest rates? I can increase the interest rates. Suppose you are the governor. Macha, you are the governor. You are the finance minister. You will increase the interest rates all over India of all the banks. Now, if you want to take a loan, Previously, the loan was available at 5% interest. Now, we have increased the interest to 8% interest. Tell me, will you take the loan now or you will not take the loan? Will you take the loan now or you will not take the loan? Think and tell. So, inflation is increasing. You know that now I have to control the liquidity. In order to control the liquidity, I have a best idea. I will increase the interest rates. Now, when the interest rate increases, will you take the loan or you will not take the loan? Think and answer. Everybody is saying the same thing. Sir, definitely, sir, definitely we will not take the loan. Sir, previously it was available for 5%. Now, it is available at 8%. I will not take the loan. Achha, achha. If you do not take the loan, can I say the banking sector will get affected? Why so? Why if the banking sector will get affected? Because banks major revenue, major source of income is through lending of loans. They lend the loans. They get the interest. That is their income. But now if people have stopped taking the loans because interest rate has increased. If interest rate has increased, people have stopped taking the loans. People will not take the loan. Then banking sector will go for a toss. Can I say banking market shares will go down? Yes or no? No income, if no income, definitely it will reduce the banking sector's profit. And if banking sector's profit is reduced, you realize this. Will you invest in banking sector or no? Definitely not. And if not, then can I say banking sector share price will go down? Okay, okay, agreed. Second thing that I have. Suppose now you are not going to take the loan. So what will happen to the real estate sector? What will happen to the real estate sector? For building a real estate, suppose if I want to purchase a house, if I want to purchase a commercial property, I will take a loan from the bank. Not everybody has enough liquidity. Here. I will take the bank loan, uh, loan from the bank. Now it was available at 5%. I was ready to take. Now it has increased to 8%. Oh my God. Oh my God. It has increased to 8%. Will I purchase real estate or not? Can I say the real estate market will now fall? Real estate sector will fall? Bolo, bolo, yes or no? Can I say real estate sector will also fall? Are we understanding guys? Yes or no? Real estate sector is connected to many other sectors less like cement sector, Ambuja cement. Now, if real estate has come for a halt, cement industry will also go down. If cement industry has gone down, can I say the real estate also wants the steel pipes and everything? Can I say that will also go down? Are we understanding guys? Are we understanding guys? Banking sector falls. Real estate sector falls. Cement sector falls. Steel sector falls. OMG, sir, everybody is falling. The whole market will fall. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Wait, wait. Automobile. Will you purchase automobile with a higher load or you will not purchase? If you don't purchase automobile, can I say automobile industry will also go down? Tata Motors can go down, right? Because loans are now available at a uh, heavy this. Oh my God. Did you understand the interconnections? Yes, but, but, but there is a flip side. There are certain stocks called as defensive stocks. Pay attention. Like the IT stocks, like the pharma stocks, like the FMCG stocks. Do you know what will happen to them? They will stabilize or they will increase. Pay attention. Now, let's take an example of a pharma stock. Will you stop having medicine if the government interest increases the interest rates? Dina is saying finally the whole economy will fall. No, no, Dina, no. Pay attention now. Suppose now, now look at the pharma sector. Is it that the interest rates have increased? Now will you stop consuming the medicines? Uh -huh, mm -hmm. Yes or no? Definitely not, sir. So can I say the pharma stock will stay intact? Now think from my angle. I have invested in banking sector. Government has increased the interest rate. So I know the banking sector and real estate sector will go down. I will immediately withdraw the money from banking sector and put it in the pharma sector. Sir, but pharma sector will stay stable. No, agreed. So 
somebody is falling and somebody is stable which is better can i say somebody who is stable is better than the one who is falling so people will start investing in this stable sector and if people will start investing more and more the demand for that share price will increase and the pharma sector will increase even if it is stable at such scenario so is that going to be the case with fmcg also fast moving consumer goods like your biscuit you like your uh, uh, probably your soap or your uh, shampoo will you start not have a start stop having bath oh my god finance minister has increased the rates mama i will not have a bath from today is it going to happen no you will still continue consuming the fmcgs as it is i will immediately withdraw the money from here because i know they are going to fall immediately withdraw the money from here i know they are going to fall and i will put it in fmcg and pharma industries why because i know at least they are going to remain stable and if they are going to remain stable if they are going to remain stable it is better than the falling market so now i will put it here if i put it here the demand will increase the share price will increase at least here the things are doing better yes or no right 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 now pay attention now pay attention now comes the it stock what will happen to the it stock see here now tell me one thing if inflation increases can i say the value of your money decreases basically if 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 there is inflation we started with that if there is increased inflation can i say value of money value of money basically decreases so suppose if uh, I went in the market and I asked for one kg of say tomato. One kg of tomato costed say hundred rupees. Say hundred rupees. Now after inflation, after inflation, you tell me one thing. You tell me one thing. Will I get the same one kg tomato at hundred rupees? Will my hundred rupees command the same one kg tomato? The answer is no. So can I say the value of money has gone down? Now probably I may only be able to get 900 grams of tomato or probably for a 100 gram of tomato or probably for a 100 gram of tomato, I will have to pay rupees 110. Yeah, <laughs> are we understanding guys? Yes or no? Now, as a result of this, see what is happening? The value of money is decreasing. If the value of money decreases, basically it will increase the value of dollar basically it will increase the value of dollar see your say one dollar costed you say 90 rupees now there is inflation in your country as a result in the same 90 rupees you will not be able to buy the same dollar so now you will have to buy this dollar at 100 rupees you will have to buy the dollar at 100 rupees because there is inflation at your end so the value of money has gone down as a result see now how does this whole purchasing power parity works i'll explain it to you when we are doing forex but for now can I say this is the scenario? Now, if the value of dollar has increased, look at the IT sector. Can I say the IT sector majorly exports services? Can I say the IT sector majorly exports the services? And if the IT sector exports services, what will happen is, suppose I wanted $1,000. I was to get $1,000. Previously, if I used to get $1,000, I will say $1,000 into 90. I will get 90,000 rupees. But now, with this same $1,000, with this same $1,000, because of inflation, because of growing, uh, reducing value of money, because of growing value of dollar, what will happen? Can I say I will get the 1 lakh rupees? So, can I say IT sector is going to benefit? Can I say IT sector is going to benefit? Yes, because of the forex gains of IT companies. Can I say here the IT sector will also increase? So I will now remove the money from here and I will put it in these stocks. Are we understanding? So what happened? Inflation increased. You try to decrease liquidity. For doing that, you increase the interest rate. When the interest rate increases, these are the sectors which will fall. Logically, I've explained to you. You can also check now the share markets. Now that you know what happens in a monetary policy, what happens with a, when a Federal Reserve increases the rates, when a RBI increases the repo rate, reduces the repo rate, reverse repo rate. We'll understand all of that when we move on. But this is what is happening. Can I say the IT, the pharma, the FMCG may increase. What happened to the dollar when the inflation is increasing? Can I say the dollar increases? The dollar value increases, correct? Rupee value has gone down. The dollar value increases. Now, what will happen to the gold? What will happen to the gold? India is an importer of gold. India is an importer of gold. Now, if I am importing gold, can I say I have to pay in dollar? Now, if I am paying in dollar, can I say my the amount has increased? 
previously i had to pay 90000 dollar now i have to pay 100 1 lakh dollar so my gold cost will increase if the gold cost will increase in the indian context gold price will also increase in the indian context gold price will also increase same is the case with crude oil crude oil also if you know india imports crude oil india net imports crude oil so again crude oil also we will import and if i am importing crude oil what will happen if i am importing crude oil what will happen definitely if i am importing crude oil the payment that i am doing is higher so crude oil cost will also increase from a indian perspective are we understanding what will happen to the bonds what will happen to the bonds do you have any idea what is bonds last thing that i am going to come into is bond and then you will realize that how the whole market functions and how important it is to pay attention to the monetary and fiscal financial policies of the government which you would have always ignored but this is now what you will be reading here and you will realize that how important it is in terms of your stock market trading as well so far how did we do the stock market trading by closing our eyes, somebody says, purchase this, we will purchase. Were we able to do the fundamental analysis? No, because probably we were not even aware how does all of this work. Are you understanding, guys? Now, what is going to happen to the bonds? Pay attention. Suppose, what is a bond? Bond is like a fixed deposit only. Basically, bonds give bonds is like a fixed deposit. Give fixed rate of interest every year. Give fixed rate of interest yearly every year there is a fixed rate of interest that we get in bonds and that we get in fd then how are bonds and fd different bonds are traded and because they are traded the price of bond increases or decreases based on demand and supply based on demand and supply are we understanding guys Right now, pay attention. Let's say there is Mr. Adani on 1st of December. Mr. Adani has come up 1st December 2025. Mr. Adani has come up with a bond and says that whoever wants to purchase one lakh bond, we will give them 8%, say 7% rate of interest. 7% rate of interest is what we will give them. So, year one. 7% rate of interest. Year 2, 7% rate of interest. Year 3, 7% rate of interest. This is how it works. Now, in the year 2027, Adani needs more money. Why does Adani, why has Adani issued a bond? He will give me a bond. I will pay him money. He will pay me interest in return. And as a result of this interest, it is good for me. But Adani will use this money in his growing his businesses. Adani ports, Adani infrastructure, Adani green, Adani transmission, Adani this, Adani that. Now they are coming up with some new business. And as a result, they need more money. And if they need more money, they will again issue a 1 lakh rupees bond. Again, they will issue a 1 lakh bond. Now when they are issuing a 1 lakh rupees bond, pay attention what is happening. Now the interest rates have increased in india the interest rates have increased if the interest rates have increased adani will have to issue a bond at nine percent now imagine if now he is going to issue a bond at nine percent what will happen everybody will sell this bond which is giving seven percent they will sell this bond and come here and they will say let's purchase this bond no nine percent we will be getting now what will happen to this bond as a result of this the value of bond will go down because of increase in interest rates and think of a vice versa proposition suppose if the year instead of nine percent suppose now adani comes up with a new bond with only five percent with only five percent rate of interest what will happen people will start Start, whoever wants now to invest in bond will start coming to this bond say they are, instead of five percent we are getting seven percent let's purchase this bond purchasing power will increase when the interest rate has decreased the purchasing of bond increases and the value of bond will increase so can i say they are inversely proportional so in our situation what will happen in our situation the interest rate has increased what will happen to the value of bond the value of bond will decrease. Are we understanding? See, see, see. Simple proposition. Now, when the interest rate decreases, people will start going towards this bond. 
demand increase price increase value of bond increases but here in our situation we have increased the interest rates what will happen to the bond value it will go down did you understand everything logically this is all a part of your financial management a part of your uh, economics monetary policies but probably we had heard of inflation but i am so happy that each one of you were able to derive all of this when i used the word inflation because of the two examples i made you the monetary governor and you realize that oh in order to curb the inflation i will have to manage the liquidity in order to manage the liquidity i will increase the interest rates the impact of which will now go on to the different stocks and that is where the analysis began from stocks share market we moved on to the dollar from dollar we moved on to the gold from gold crude oil and bonds as well and everything delivered in the most logical manner that is in front of you did you understand everything or it was too much for you for the first day or it was too much but interesting and it really opened up your mind towards a lot of financial probably terminologies or financial implications that we are going to understand in the upcoming sessions and all of this will be useful we have a chapter called as bonds can i say their interest rates and all bonds uh, connection we will be learning do we have a dollar importance why dollar increases when interest rate increases yes can i say the connection will be in forex right share market can i say portfolio management is when we will see the share market going up and down valuation of securities all of this everybody are we totally clear with whatever we have done so far right did you find it interesting did you find it yes did you find that yes this was the need of the hour for you clear sir very interesting perfect okay so for now i know i know i know if i start something else if i say something you will be like sir okay we are done so yes let's become the next junjun wala oh wow <laughs> all are so interconnected and so very interesting very true and see it became interesting because you were coordinating always because you were there and interconnecting things and trust me that really helped me okay guys so yes we will wrap it up here as i told you uh this is just the beginning we have to go a long way and definitely there is a lot more to learn first day i thought that we should have a small discussion of so many concepts that i just discussed now in the next session we will start definitely with the first chapter of ours which is mutual funds as per phase 1 and yes very interactive and all our sessions are going to be interactive in the same manner huh? i don't want that i should be talking to the wall i want active people talking to me and the more you communicate more Uh, you know doubts will be solved and it will really be helpful to you in the long run all right guys okay guys time for me to say hasta la vista thank you for this amazing session great had a great time <laughs> chalo okay take care anything else you can just drop me a whatsapp and uh, we will see you soon Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Yes.